Hey, if you're building a website with the intent of growing a business, whether it's yours or someone else's, you need people to find it. And that happens when you show up in search results, when someone's looking for what you offer, when people are asking questions you can answer, and in AI tools like ChatGPT when they recommend your site. That's why SEO or search engine optimization is super important. In this video, I wanted to show you how you can avoid common Webflow SEO mistakes that can prevent your website from being seen on search engines. I'm Mike, a former Flux Webflow Masterclass student, great class by the way, turned Webflow SEO specialist. And my aim is to help businesses get the most out of their Webflow websites, which essentially means making them easier to find, easier to understand, and more likely to convert. If you want your site to show up in search engines and AI tools like ChatGPT, there's some simple mistakes that you gotta avoid. And there's five mistakes I see quite often, even on beautifully designed websites. And so I thought, let's find a fix. So mistake number one has to do with not having a proper setup in your Webflow project setting. Sometimes we're so excited to just launch our website and we forget to go through the settings, but they're actually really important for SEO and search visibility. So here, just using my website as an example, here you're looking at the favicon. I have a custom favicon installed. The intent of that is that when people browse or they land on my website and they see my favicon, it's just a, it's just a way to indicate to them that this is my site. Sometimes that helps a little bit with keeping someone on a website longer because they might recognize your brand. So that's a good thing that you wanna have. But here they have this tab SEO and we wanna go there. And here you can see some things that we can add that are very important for SEO. So here you wanna make sure that whenever you have your website launch, you wanna make sure that Webflow subdomain indexing is off. That will just help to make sure that two websites, your, your staging and your publish are not getting uh, both published and indexed by Google at the same time because that can create duplicate content. That's a bad thing. Uh, here we want to make sure that sitemap auto generate sitemap is created. So anytime that you add a, a new page to your website, Webflow will automatically up the, upload the or update the sitemap. And this is going to be really helpful because normally this would be a manual process and you don't have to worry about that anymore. And the last thing you want to make sure you do is set your global canonical tag here. And this is going to be helpful with just telling Google where the original source of content is coming from, what which is, let's say, the the first, the, the original page, so that as things or, or as more content is being created and there might be sort of variations and duplicates or something like this, it just helps Google to say, hey, here's the original source where the actual original content came from. Number two on mistakes is not setting up proper meta information. So for this, I'm referring to page titles and meta descriptions. So here we're looking at a beautiful website and I'm just using a Chrome extension called Detailed SEO here. And we can see that on this page, this is what the output is. It's just one-to-one -one ABM, there's no description. So the problem here is that if someone tries to share this website with someone, whether it be through social media, or WhatsApp, something like this, there's, there's an opportunity for information to show up that sounds relevant. But in this case, it's not really clear. And this happens a lot because what you need to do is you have to go on each page, you have to make sure that you have this project settings, you, or I'm sorry, you go to the page settings here, and you wanna make sure that you fill this out information here on the title tag and also the meta description. By doing that and making them relevant to keywords, this is definitely going to help with SEO. All right, so this is a good segue into the third common mistake that I see often, which is trying to be too creative with these title tags and forgetting the whole keyword strategy and, and how someone goes about searching. So in this example, this is a chiropractor's website. And so you have to think, how would someone search for a chiropractor? Well, they probably type in something like chiropractor and the location that they're in. So Annapolis, in this example, Maryland, and we want, and you know, this is what they're going to see: true, true chiropractic care. That's the name of the company, chiropractor in Annapolis. So that's a signal to someone that's searching for something that this is very relevant. When you try to become too creative, it, if you were to imagine, for example, here we're just using this headline when someone lands on on their website, helping extraordinary 
extraordinary families achieve extraordinary results. It sounds great, but when it comes to the the mode, when someone is searching for something, if it's not relevant, that's it's not really relevant in this case. More than likely, the person's just going to click away, or is just going to say, "Oh, that's not for me. I'm looking for something else." So we want to avoid that. All right, and that leads me to the next common mistake that I see often, which is weak internal linking. So here we can imagine on the left the website that is built with several pages, and here what I'm just trying to demonstrate is that. Imagine you have a home page with content and then you have an about page with content. These are all separate pages and you're not linking to one of them. Well, when you're doing that, you're kind of creating these dead ends for users. So then they just go to the home page and they see stuff, they read, but they don't know what to do next. And that's not really helpful. And here on the right side, what you can see is this is kind of what we want to do with our website. So you can imagine here's your website. Let's say this is like the home page here and you have let's say design as a services, and then you would have, let's say subservices. but you want these, you kind of want your homepage to kind of branch out and link to all the other pages. And when possible, if you can take those other pages and link them vice versa, and you're kind of creating this spider net. Well, the way that search engines work is they call, they kind of reference, you might've heard of a web crawler. And what it's doing is it's crawling through your website. And the more that you can link to your websites, uh, or I'm sorry, your web pages, what it helps to do is it just helps Google, it helps inform Google that you have all of this content. And for a user, it's going to provide sort of a way to navigate and find your, your content. All of these things help increase the possibilities that people will spend longer time on your, on your web pages. And that is going to be a signal to Google that it's very good. So here, for example, here's like a website where uh, th this is the chiropractor website and we, they have service pages. And when you click on the service pages, you can see that, okay, from the home page now I can go to the service page. This is really good. Um, and now let's say I want to book an appointment. This is taking me to the contact page. This is a sort of internal linking when you can do this inside of not only your service pages, but also the blogs and take, use your blogs to point to your service pages you're going to increase the ability, your, the, the internal linking, and this is all going to be good signals for SEO and to help show up in search results. All right, and with that, that leads me to the fifth and final common mistake that I see, which is not becoming buddies with this guy right here. This is Google Search Console. And so, as you recall, in Webflow, we can create a sitemap and we can have that automatically updated. Well, what we want to do is we want to feed that information to Google to say, hey, bing, bing, Google, here's all the pages of my website. And as I'm updating, here's new pages that are being created. Well, you do that by submitting your sitemap to this Google Search Console. And the advantage of that is if you want your website to index faster than, you know, just waiting for something to happen, this is kind of a way of just tapping Google saying, hey, Google, just let you know, I updated a page or I just launched a new website. Here it is. And can you can you index me really fast? So that's kind of the, the idea of it. But just to show you a little bit in case you've never used it before here, there's some really good information. So here really quick, I'll just show you, you wanna click here on sitemaps. This is where you'll submit your sitemap URL. And once you do that, and then what, what will happen is it will, it will produce any errors. It will display if you have any errors that, you can, that can be fixed that prevent your website from being seen. But what's also good is that you get all these performance ideas and you could see like, hey, these are how this is how people are landing on your website. What, what are the search queries they're typing? And you can also see if, if you click here, you can also get an idea of your positioning where you rank for certain keywords. And this is going to help develop some strategies when you go forward, when you say, hey, I'm ranking four to six. I'm not on the top three results of this. Maybe I can look at the competitors. Maybe I can see if there's a way I can add more content on my site, on, on my pages that are going to help lift me up to the top three. And when you do that, that's all about SEO and that's gonna help bring more visibility to your web pages. All right, so with that, those are the five common Webflow mistakes that I see that from now on, we're gonna avoid. We're not gonna do them anymore. You know, having a great website for business 
one part of it is beautiful design and no doubt that when you can do that you create a good relation or connection there's a bright energy with people and that's really important but you also need to be found and that's a really important thing when it comes to any website and so that's what i just wanted to do in this video was to show you some ways how you can let's say increase the visibility of your website in the effort of just creating a more valuable website for anyone, for yourself or for your clients. I hope this video was helpful. And if you have any questions, just drop them in the comments. I'll try to answer them. I'm happy to help. And if you're building your next website right now, wish you tons of luck to make it beautiful, but also let's make it rank and be found. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day.